Hello everybody and welcome to the Daily Splat. Today is video number one in our series of 20 reviewing, sorry, previewing the English Premier League season. That's right, I've managed to just about finish reviewing the last season in time to go through and preview this season's matches. Okay, so where else could we start? Because we're going to do it alphabetically other than Arsenal, that's right. The Gunners is uh, our subject of conversation today. So, at this point in time, uh, just heading into the start of August, we need to look at basically these predictions based on the squads as they are now. Obviously, things can change, and with Arsenal, almost certainly will change, uh, and that could affect the prediction. So, I'm not going to go for specific places. You know, I'm not going to say that Arsenal will definitely finish fourth or third or sixth or you know something like that but I'm gonna give a sort of vague within these places type thing what they can expect to be doing um, with the players they currently have so in terms of signings Arsenal have so far confirmed two signings Oliver Giroud the uh, top scorer in the French league from uh, the title winning Montpellier has come in uh, playing up front for them and he has been joined by German forward Lucas Podolski from Cologne uh, so two forwards so far, the only signings so far in the departures lounge for Arsenal. Uh, Manuel El Munya has left, he's joined Watford. Uh, Joel Campbell and Danielson have been sent out on loan, Danielson for the second time. And Gavin Hoyt has been released, and so has young defender Tom Cruise. Not the same as uh, the top gun fella. Um, so, you know, Arsenal, a couple of forwards in, you, you know, got a couple of fringe players out. You'd say that it's been a good summer so far. Well... That's, of course, uh, ignoring the obvious story of Mr. Robin Van Persie, who's made it clear that he would like to leave Arsenal. Uh, reasons being, he wants to win trophies. Fair enough, Arsenal haven't won one for six years, seven years, something like that. You know, it has been seven years, yeah. It's, you know, it's not unreasonable in, in that respect. Um, he's got 12 months left on his contract, and... You know, he said he wants to go. However, he could also just want a nice, big, healthy, fat paycheck. And at the age of 29, and with his injury record that he's had over his career, it's probably, you know, the the only chance he's going to get to get a really big sort of paycheck. And currently, those, uh, the offers of uh, teams paying that check have not been shortcoming. Uh, short and coming forward, there are three main contenders. Manchester United, Manchester City and Juventus of Italy. Now, uh, obviously, from Arsenal's perspective, they'd like to keep him and convince him to sign a new five-year deal and finish his career there. However, that doesn't seem likely, despite Arsene Wenger saying that that's what they're aiming to do. So, where's he going to end up? Well, I think Juventus would be the preferable option for people at Arsenal, get him away from the Premier League. You know, he can. You know, the only possible time he could affect them would be in European Cups. Um, and that's if the draw works out that way. Get him playing in another league so he's not scoring goals against you. Get a bit of money and obviously focus on the new forwards that you've brought in. However, that seems like not a particularly likely option. It's sort of likely. You know, Juventus are back in the Champions League and ambitious and have a bit of money to spend, but the fact that their manager, uh, Mr Conte, is uh, currently under investigation for not reporting match-fixing match fixing when he was the manager of Siena, um, there's a bit of a cloud over what Juventus are exactly going to do at this point, so a little bit tricky. So that leaves the option of Robin going to Manchester. Manchester City, as things currently stand, haven't signed anybody. They're trying to sell players. It looks like Adebayor is going to be going off to Spurs uh, as a full-time Spurs player, not just on loan. So uh, his wages will be off the book. But they've still got to try and get rid of the likes of Roque Santa Cruz, uh, Carlos Tevez, um, Edin Dzeko. You know, they'd need to get rid of at least two of those players to really free up the funds um, to get Robin Van Persie in because he'd want a big contract. When I say free up the funds, I don't mean... City is short of cash, it's so that it would fit under financial fair play. Um, and so far, bids for Jekko and Tevez and Santa Cruz haven't exactly been forthcoming, at least they haven't been widely reported. So, you know, City really do need to let a couple of players go um, to to bring in the big names like Van Persie. And at the moment, it's uh, all a bit quiet over in Eastland, so we'll have to wait and see there. This leaves Manchester United. Now, as a United fan, personally, um, I'd, I'd be happy to have him, but I'm not sure he's where we should be focusing on rebuilding our team. I do feel that we need a strong central midfield presence. Someone like Luka Modric, which 
talk about for a few years. And whilst that looks unlikely, Van Persie, yeah, top scorer in the Premier League, yeah, I'd love him to <laughs> come to United and form a great partnership with Wayne Rooney. But when you consider that United do have the likes of Danny Welbeck and Javier Hernandez there already, um, I'm not sure whether having Van Persie coming in and sort of taking away a playing spot from those two young up-and-coming and excellent strikers is the best thing for their development, but at the same time he'd probably be around for two, three, four years if he did come in, partner Rooney, and you know maybe even take some of the burden off Rooney and allow Rooney to play a bit deeper in a sort of attacking midfield role, perhaps. Um, but the big question with United is whether they can actually afford to be giving him the same amount of money as Wayne Rooney. Obviously the debt is something that's been discussed a lot lately. United are about to be floated on the uh, New York Stock Exchange, or at least a bit of them is, so that it can raise funds, but there's controversy about that at the moment. Um, anyway, we're not going to get into it because this is the Arsenal preview. The point is, Van Persie going uh, does leave a bit of a hole. However, potentially exciting signings coming in for Arsenal in the form of Santi Carzolo from Malaga, a deal which is apparently in place with the player, but the club are uh, not keen on letting him go, and a possible loan deal for Real Madrid's Nuri Sahin. Now, Real Madrid aren't keen to let him go. They paid a fair bit of money to get him in last season, and then he didn't get in the team. I think they'd want him just to go on the loan so he gets some playing experience, and I think if Arsenal did manage to get him, that would be fantastic, and would certainly be better at filling the void left by the absentees of, uh, well, the recent departures last year of Fabrias and Nasri. I bet he'd be fantastic at filling that in. Um, and, you know, I think he could play quite well with uh, the likes of Alex Song and Mikel Arteta, and, you know, with news that Jack Wilshere could be out up until October, as things stand, um, I think he'd be very much welcome. And, of course, Carzolo brings you a threat from wide, which could be important, particularly if uh, rumours that Theo Walcott also might be on the way do come true. So, what can Arsenal expect from this season? A title challenge? Probably not. Even though they've been sort of close in the last few seasons, last season they finished in third, 19 points behind United and City. So the main objective, I think, in the Premier League would just be closing down that gap to being within, say, 9 or 10 points. Certainly finishing the Champions League spots again will be important. You've got a resurgent Chelsea, you've got Tottenham, who are currently trying to reform under Andre Villas-Boas, who could threaten. You've got Newcastle, who so far haven't lost any of their big stars. And you have to remember, they did finish fifth, and you know they're currently adding to that team, hoping to um, you know make them better and challenge for... Uh, European Cup spot, it's going to be a bit tricky for um, for the Gunners to hold off uh, the, the threats of others, and that's why I do think they're going to finish probably fourth. Um, they could do third, but I just got a feeling that Chelsea will finish above them this year. We know, you know, Chelsea are going to do better than than sixth with what they managed uh, this season just gone. Um, I think fourth is where they've should be aiming for third or fourth, and I think they will get it. I do think even if Van Persie goes, they'll still have a better team than Tottenham or Newcastle or Liverpool, Everton, etc. So I'd say I'd say fourth is certainly a, a realistic goal for them, but they've got to win a trophy. They just have to. Obviously, losing the Carling Cup final to Birmingham a couple of years ago was a big disappointment. They need to focus on those cups, or maybe even the Champions League. A bit harder to win, I know. Um, but they need to get a trophy, and maybe if he just focused on playing the strongest possible team in the games, in the FA Cup and in the Carling Cup, um, and just finally get a trophy, that's got to be the aim. So we'll have to wait and see. But there you go, that is the preview for Arsenal as things stand. OK, make sure that you tune in tomorrow when we'll be previewing the season for Aston Villa, and we'll be seeing how the villains can uh, prepare and whether they can try and have a slightly better season on Lambert than they had under old uh, Big Egg, uh, Alex McCoyst. Uh, not Alex McCoyst, McLeish. My mistake. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so tune in tomorrow for the Aston Villa preview. Until then, bye-bye. <laughs>